true, Daddy. Jack Frost. Just a matter of time till he catches up with us. Why, well, it is a wondrous thing watching the seasons change, isn't it? Reminds you the world's got its own schedule to keep. <laughs> Speaking of schedules, isn't it time we got back on the road? For the holiday, the traffic's gonna be fierce. What, an interrupt lunch bowl over here? <laughs> I figure as long as Green Machine doesn't go into overtime, we're all right. Dinah, is there any more hot cocoa? Yeah, is that with or without the pickles and the chocolate covered cherries? <laughs> That's not funny. She takes after her old man. <laughs> oh, we've come a long way this past year, Russell. You think my sister will even recognize me? What's wrong, honey? I haven't told. She doesn't know I'm pregnant. They've been trying so hard, and... Well, we should be done with having babies. If I don't think it's fair, imagine how she's gonna feel. Let's just give her the baby. Baby jokes and pregnant women don't mix, Russell. I think I better go give Mama a hand. Let's get this show on the road. And, honey, don't worry about it. We'll pick the right time. We'll tell her she'll be fine. My name is Russell Green. Maybe you passed me and my family out on the highway. Maybe you were driving some fancy sports car or old beat-up four-door. Maybe you had some place to be. Or maybe, like us, you're living out your dream with your house hitched up behind you and America the Beautiful up ahead. But whoever you are, you be sure to give us a wave next time you drive by. Because we're your neighbors. And we're all on the road together. outside. Now, where's your coat, young lady? Oh, who cares? Mm. I haven't missed you. Hey, I haven't missed you. Hey, Laura. Mm. You get prettier every time I see well. you. <laughs> Which one of you guys is older anyway? Ouch, that hurt. This has got to be... Nathaniel. Uh -huh. He's being the youngest in the family. He has a special way with words. Well, you all look wonderful. Oh, I look a whole lot better after a long soak in a tub. I know you got one. <laughs> I'll call you right back. Work never ends. Hi, everybody. Hey, you. Hey, Steve. Hey. How's that mall coming? Right on schedule. Went with the cobblestone walkways, like you suggested. Well, I believe that was Claire's suggestion, but if it works, I'll take credit for it. <laughs> yeah, I should be happy to know I got a new satellite dish. Uh, do you have a football package? All three of them. My brother's died and gone to heaven. <laughs> well, so much for a tough year, huh? New credit card, big limit. Ah. So I'll go inside. <laughs> Watching other men bother each other? <laughs> Aunt Laura, quick, it's a commercial where he keep the extra chairs for the dining room. No, uh, never mind about the chairs. We'll take care of that. Your job is to keep the bad guys from scoring any more touchdowns. You could take those place mats then. Honey, six o'clock. Russell, would you like red or white? Uh, red, please. Red it is. Claire, how about you? Oh, no, thank you. She can't. She's pregnant. waiting for the right time to tell you. I can't believe it. This is wonderful news. <laughs> this is gonna be the best Thanksgiving ever. Supposed to be a 
fun thing. It will be. Just wait till you see the faces of the kids who live here when we're finished. What do they need us for? I mean, we don't even know. Well, now, just because we're not at home doesn't mean these folks won't appreciate our help. It's been a family tradition to give help to people over the holidays ever since Russell was your son. See, some folks are alone. And this time of year can be pretty rough on them. So this is the least we can do, don't you think? Hey. Nice song. Tell me you're here for football tryouts. Our team could use a ringer. Oh, I'm just visiting. Hi, Russell Green. And this is my family. Tomas Alvarez, Reverend and full-time zookeeper. What can I do for you? We'd like to volunteer. All of you? Yes, sir, if you'll have us. Well, we could certainly use the help. When I'm not manning the altar, I run a facility here for troubled boys. It's mostly small-time offenders, runaways. Well, you can imagine we're not the most welcomed organization in town. But do you help the kids? Yes, ma'am. That's all that matters. Well, then let's get to work. Well, the kitchen can always use an extra set of hands. And there's the carpentry work, there's the bathrooms. Oh, Josh is an excellent cleaner. Yeah, but nobody can make a toilet shine like that in Canada. <laughs> this is so great. I mean, I really wanted to make this holiday special. Well, we're more than happy to lend a hand. Hey, Rev. Joe is supposed to be cleaning the floor, but he's still in counseling. Anybody interested? Spirit of Thanksgiving, son. <sighs> after they're peeled. No Thanksgiving is complete without a big bowl of homemade mashed. <clears throat> when do you think it'll be done? How's Easter sound? The dishwasher may be ancient, but I'm convinced she's still got some life in her. No, I probably just need a couple of new belts. Look, listen, I want to thank you again for everything you're doing. I mean, these kids are in trouble. I mean, their parents can't handle them. The state agencies are overwhelmed. I mean, our shelter is all they have left. Reverend Alvarez? Yes, is something wrong? Can you come with me, please? We caught one of your boys prowling around the new mall site. Good afternoon, Reverend. I think I found something that belongs to you. I didn't do anything, Rev. You were trespassing, Ace. I was just looking around. It's a free country, man. Quiet, Ronnie. Is Dunbar pressing charges? What is it this time? Russell. You guys know each other? My brother-in-law. It's the third incident this month, Reverend. My boys weren't responsible for that vandalism. Graffiti and there were witnesses. Who saw figures running away? I mean, they couldn't even tell if they were boys or girls. Well, we got us a live one today. Did he steal anything? Let's find out. Empty this one. It's just discards. Yeah. Always. I found this over by the graffiti. That's your name on it, Ronnie. Got a floor plan on the mall. Kind of young to be casing the place, aren't you? It's your call. Take men. Uh, are you sure you're up to that? Oh, don't be silly. I'm fine. You got it anyway. When you weren't looking, I told you I, I don't want it. No, you said that you didn't need it. Now, you can't wear Russell's shirts forever. Besides, a woman is never more beautiful than when she's pregnant. You should show it off. I saw the price tag. It's too expensive. Nothing is too expensive. Remember the way you used to always take care of me? Now it's my turn. It'll hurt my feelings if you don't keep them.
you took a wrong turn, your room is down the hall. I didn't realize. I thought you and Steve couldn't. It's no big deal, Claire. Forget about it. Your nesting instinct kicked in a little prematurely. Should have at least waited until I knew I was going to give birth. Mom was wrong. You can be too prepared. But you and Steve are still trying. We're always trying. We eat, sleep, and drink fertility. And we want to be parents. Is that too much to ask? No, honey, it's not. I know... No, you don't know, Claire. You don't know anything about it at all. You're going to have a baby again by accident. Maybe we should talk about that. What can I say? How dare you come into my home pregnant? Maybe we should talk about how much fun the last three years have been. The five in vitro procedures, the multiple miscarriages. How about the stress that it's put on my marriage? I'm sorry. This is it, Claire. I'm about to have my sixth in vitro. You know, this is it. I'm not getting any younger. My last chance. All I ever wanted in the world was to have children of my own. I'm sick of wanting. I am sick of it. It's my turn, Claire. It's my turn. Do what they say, Ronnie. No resistance. I'm right behind you. Sorry about this, Russ. Those kids are trouble. Everyone in town knows it. Well, they did get dealt a pretty bad hand. Yeah, well, they're not alone. Did you know how much I've poured into this place? All the time, the money, the planning. I, I even took out a second mortgage on the house. Now it's all going away because of that shelter. How long has it been here? Well, he's been here longer than I have, but he was moving, Russ, or I never would have gone forward. He had a bigger place lined up. It fell through. Now I'm falling through. You think I'm on the wrong, don't you? No, no. Problem is, you're both right. Well, except for one thing. What's that? That kid. That's up to you, Steve, but you might think about cutting him a little slack. After we finish decorating, we'll start on the centerpiece. Gosh, you guys do this every Thanksgiving? Why don't you come back next year and check it out? Anyway! A stuffy express! It's coming through! <laughs> well, these frozen turkeys feel like animals. Hope your kids are hungry. They are, Josh, in more ways than one. Hey, Russ, thanks. Whatever you said to your brother-in-law, it worked. What? He dropped the charges. Oh, that's one thing that went right today. Well, honey, we'll all deal with this sooner or later. Boy deals with it all the time. Every time she sees a baby in someone else's arms. 
We're very blessed. Yeah, we are. And I think she is, too. But maybe she just hadn't figured out how yet. Claire, it's Steve. He's calling from the hospital. What was her condition when you found her? She was unconscious. The paramedics revived her, but she was still pretty out of it. Is she going to be all right? That's what we're trying to find out. She's awake and comfortable, but we need to hold her here for tests. Don't do anything you have to. Has she complained of uh, headaches, nausea, fatigue? No, not really. Has she been under any stress lately? Well, I guess having relatives in for the holidays can be stressful, especially a bunch our size. Perhaps. But I suspect we might find something else. I'll be in touch. Thank you. You know, she didn't just faint. The nursery was trashed. She tore it apart. Oh, no. Uh, honey, whatever happened in that nursery, that's not your doing. What's going on? What are you talking about? I walked into the nursery by accident. She found me there. I knew she was upset, but I didn't know how much. And how could you? I should have known. She's my sister. I should have known. I was afraid something like this would happen. Those? Those cars are behind glass for a reason, Nathaniel. Keep your hands off. I didn't hurt anything. I was just holding it. Didn't your family teach you to ask first? What's going on here? Tell your grandson not to touch what isn't his. You people have done enough around here already. Stephen! This child didn't mean any harm. Look! Everything seems to be in order. Yeah. Uncle Steve are going through a very difficult time right now. Bottom line is, we think it's best if we don't stay at the house during our visit. But Omar is in the hospital. She needs us. You're right. But something happened that upset her. Is it the baby? Your Aunt Laura wants a family of her own more than anything else in the world, and our visit is harder on her than she expected. Does this mean we're going back to Chicory Creek for Thanksgiving? I certainly hope not. We've made a commitment to this youth shelter. And we're gonna honor it. We'll be here through the holidays. I'm just here to help. If you don't want me to, I'm out of here. You got someplace better to go? Hey, leave him alone, man. Hey, man, we're cool. We're just playing with him a little. Yeah? Doesn't look like he's having much fun to me, man. You live in large? Not exactly. Thanks. No sweat. Saw you the other day. Name's Ronnie. Nathaniel. I'm just visiting. I didn't think you were checking in. Can I ask you a question? What are you yeah. doing here? I don't have a family. Got into some trouble. Bounced around a few foster homes. You know, I wasn't very lucky there. Next thing I know. Alvarez picks me up. He's cool and everything. And not like blood. I don't know where I belong. Tell me about it. My mom's dead. 
hardly ever see my dad. You mean that marine-looking fellow who helped me out the other day? This is your old man? I live with my Uncle Russell and my Aunt Claire. They take good care of me, but sometimes I wish my dad wasn't in jail. Nathaniel, you like building stuff? Yeah, sometimes. Well, I've been working on something. Want to check it out? Sure. Looks like they're enjoying themselves. It took me a while to realize how important a simple chore like raking leaves and gardening could become. Well, my kids don't do chores with that kind of enthusiasm. <laughs> Most of these kids have never been trusted with any kind of responsibility. And many have never been trusted at all. That's a terrible thing to do to a child. Some people aren't ready to be parents. Some have drug and alcohol problems they pass on. And others survive on a life of petty crime, and that's the lesson that kids learn. Some of them just don't care, you know? There are so many people who would make wonderful parents, who want children but just can't have them. It just doesn't seem fair. No, that's what I kept telling myself when I was growing up. When my dad beat me one too many times, and when I was living on the street, blue from the cold. You were a runaway? I was one of the lucky ones. I met a real nice family, took me in. So now you're giving something back? I'm trying. <laughs> but didn't your own family ever look for you? These kids, kids like I was, their families are so broken down, there's no room for love. Everyone's just focused on their own survival. I have a brother. I've been looking for him for years. Well, I can only hope. He ended up as lucky as I am. What's the matter, Slugger? Too much pie bacon wear you out? Uncle Russell, did you know a lot the kids don't have a place where they belong? Ooh, sounds like something happened here today. You want to talk about it? Well... Aunt Claire said, the only thing that Aunt Laura wants in the whole world is a family of her own. Mm -hmm. But she can't have one because she can't have a natural child. And I'm not your natural child, so how can I belong? Well, I may not be your natural father, but I love you just like a real son. You know that, don't you? Yeah, but... Aunt Claire didn't carry me around in her body for nine months, like Josh and Dinah. No, no. But she carries you someplace a lot more important. We both do. And you know what? Different times in your life, you're going to belong different places. Like when I was a little boy, I belonged with my parents and Joe. And now I belong here with you. And one of these days, you're going to grow up and you'll move on. But for right now... You make our family complete. Good, because without you guys, I don't know where I'd be. So what's the verdict? Will you get out of here in time for Thanksgiving dinner? Maybe even sooner than that. We have your test results and we need to talk about them. You had something called ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. It was a reaction to the hormone treatments. It's fairly rare, but it does happen. And I know it could be quite painful. But I'm all right now. The danger is over, yes. Could you say what you came to tell us, please, doctor? Sometimes the damage is permanent. The MRI showed evidence of scarring the blood supply to your ovaries was temporarily cut off. I'm not ever going to have children, am I? No, you're not. There are alternatives. We're not interested in any alternatives, Doctor. Thank you. I wish I had better news. I'm sorry. I've got 
to meet the electrician at the site. Steve? I'm sorry. I've got to go. I got to your room and you weren't there. I... You remember when we were little and Daddy gave me that doll? I used to dress her and feed her like she was a real baby. I remember. Remember her name? Molly. You would hold her whenever Dad fought with Mom, which was pretty much most of the time. Well, after he left, I never let Molly out of my sight. Daddy might have left me, but I was not going to be like him. I was going to be the best parent ever. You still could. No, Claire, it's over. I'm going to accept that now. It doesn't have to be that way. If I've learned anything being on the road, it's that dead ends don't exist. If you're talking about adoption, we've discussed it, and it's not the same. I'm not going to tell you or Steve how to feel. I, I know it's not my place. But you and I both know what it's like to feel abandoned. I don't believe a child has to be your flesh and blood to deserve love. And I don't believe deep down in your heart you think that either. All through my fertility procedures, wanting a baby so badly, I couldn't stand to see a baby in someone else's arms. Claire, I've been so selfish. No. Just human. For letting me out of here this afternoon. Hmm. I want you to come home. I love you, Claire. for what's been happening. You know, my life feels like this proverbial roller coaster ride, and I can't get off. To tell you the truth, I hardly recognize myself anymore. Hmm. It's funny how that can happen, isn't it? I felt pretty much like that right after I got back from Nam. I didn't know who I was or where I was going. That way again when I got laid off. <clears throat> Life can do that to you sometimes. Just make you feel worthless. If you let it. So what happened to change things? You have this, this sense of purpose, like you know exactly where you belong. <laughs> What's your secret? sitting in it. If God's the secret, then why is he punishing me? I can't have children, but my business is in shambles. My marriage is about to fall apart. I mean, what have I done wrong? Well, when I have questions like that, I try to go inside. And then if I need to go beyond that, I always come to a place like this. Man's pretty good with advice. Well, I've been a fortune to every doctor in town, and according to them, there are no answers. Is that God's will? I don't know. I can't tell you what God wants. I can tell you he believes in family. Well, so do I. And I can't have one. You've got a lot. And she has a sister who loves her very much. And the rest of us are always there for you. 
Well, are you ready to accept that or not? You're not alone, Steve. No, no, I'm sorry. Need anything else? Just make some calls to make. No, I'm fine. If I need anything, Claire's upstairs. And you sure you're okay with having them all back here? Last thing you need is to get upset again. I, I said I felt better. I meant it. Good. You sit here with me for a minute. Steve, when I was in the hospital, I did something that I shouldn't have. I went into the nursery and picked up someone else's baby. Nobody saw me, and, and I put her back as soon as I realized what I was doing. I just wanted to hold a newborn, feel what it was like. Their eyes were so trusting. I always wanted my own baby to look at me like that. Yeah, I know. I was looking forward to so many things. Shooting hoops, birthday parties, bicycle lessons. Look, why are we talking about this? It's over, Laura. We've tried everything. Maybe we haven't. I want us to talk about adopting. I thought we agreed that adopting was out of the question. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe we both were. Steve, when I picked up that baby, I felt such overwhelming love, like I have never experienced before. And I felt that love for someone else's child. I can't. I can't explain why, but I just can't. In my whole adult life, I've thought about what I would do with my son. The advice I would give, the stuff I would pass along. Be a reflection of me, but better. Because I would help him. You can still do that. You can still be a wonderful father. How? Maybe there's a baby out there who needs us as much as we need him. I don't know how to be the father of someone else's child. about how all this came down. All the years, all we hoped for. And it's never gonna happen. And that's your choice. What are you talking about? I wanted to be a father. <laughs> then be one. That little boy over there, I'm his father. Now, my brother may have sired him, but that's about where that ended. Yeah, but you have a son of your own. I have two sons. I don't know how I'd get through a day without that boy now. See, being a father isn't a... Well, it's not just an act of passion. It's not a medical procedure. It's a... It's a gift from God. into somebody's bank account. What we're talking about here is the future of 27 innocent boys. There's nothing innocent about these kids, Reverend. That's a matter of opinion. Opinion? What about the vandalism and the graffiti? Yeah. Yeah. 
Sam, you've had your turn. The Reverend has the floor. When I started this community program two years ago, I never dreamt that my toughest battle would be fought against the very people I turned to for support. The same parishioners I address each and every Sunday. Reverend Alvarez, the church and the youth shelter are two separate issues. Are they? My job as a spiritual and religious leader is to spread God's word that we must work together. Well, my job is to sell lamps. Now, who's going to buy them if people are too afraid to come to this part of town? My kids may need your patience right now. But if we treat them decently, I promise you, they will give something back. Oh, I haven't got time to wait for some kid to go through rehab. I've got a business to run and a family to feed. I'm standing here opening up my heart in the hopes that you will also. You close your eyes and you shut our doors. You open them and we can do anything. Thank you, Reverend. If there are no further comments at this time, let's, let's put this matter to a vote. Sir? Yes, young man. All my life, I dreamed of being a place where people understand. Where I fit in. I finally found a place where I belong. And now you just want to take it away. Don't I deserve a family, too? Steve, you want to say something? Yes, sir, I do. I've worked too hard and for too long to want to crash and burn now. And a successful business community requires safe neighborhoods. Yeah. But to what end? If we have to give up our hearts and souls in order to get them? Whatever happened to the idea of courage? Mr. Mayor, you served in Vietnam, didn't you? And Sam, your son was in Desert Storm, right? We're willing to risk our lives, the lives of our children, for our country, yet we're not willing to risk a few dollars to help those in our community less fortunate than ourselves. Now, we could throw those boys out on the street if we want to, but. When I think about how much my family means to me, I know that I can't support taking away the only family that most of those boys have ever known. I'm going to vote to keep the shelter. Does anybody have the wherewithal to follow that? It would be helpful to the council to get a sense of the room. Very well. Well, all those in favor of permitting the youth shelter to continue their operation, please signify by raising your hand. Thanksgiving. You too. Thanks for everything. For what? Well, for dropping the charges. 
and for not closing us down. It took a lot of guts. You all right? Well, I'm trying. You know, you did a really nice job with that floor plan of the mall. Thanks. I like drawing buildings and houses and stuff. That's how I get started. You know, if you want to come by the house sometime, I'll show you the original drawing. Cool. I like that. Maybe we should have done this a long time ago. Shall we? The last few days have taught me a thing or two about faith. And I thought I had that department pretty well covered. But right now, I'd like to turn to the man whose family has strengthened my belief in human kindness to lead us in the Thanksgiving prayer. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's hold your one hands. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you for allowing us to all be together on this special day. We thank you for listening to us when we call on you and for always showing us the way, even when we don't want to see it. We thank you for putting food in our bellies and a roof over our heads. We thank you for the love that we have for each other. And we thank you for welcoming us to your family and for reaching out to ours. Amen. Shall we? Saturday, May 4th. She's young, famous, pregnant, and dead. 